Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a morning review of the European indices. Uh, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Alternatively, you can visit the educational website where I post my videos and analysis daily. Okay, let's try and uh, <clears throat> decipher this market and see exactly where we're headed at present. Interesting um, opening this morning with regards to the Shanghai. The Shanghai obviously um, uh, down quite substantially overnight. Uh, we can certainly see that the index was down by almost 5.5 percent, if I'm if I can recollect. Uh, okay, so certainly a risk-off scenario. Also, with regards to the rhetoric between Turkey and Russia, is certainly increasing on both sides. With regards to the um, uh, Russian uh, PM, uh, Mr. Putin, stating that uh, uh, he claims that his location or the locations of his uh, artillery and um, obviously. Um, uh, location of his uh, uh, flights that are being over taken over Syria, etc., are being divulged, and hence the reason why the the airplane was shot down. So it certainly doesn't look like they obviously uh, the uh, the relationship is amicable in any way whatsoever, and it certainly seems to be the, the, the or it certainly feels like the tension is certainly increasing, and that certainly is uh, understood to be a risk off scenario for my uh, interpretation thus far. Also, with regards to commodities, even though geopolitical tensions certainly seem to be rising, and also we have the terrorism threat worldwide with regards to uh, the situation in France, obviously, and also the terrorism alert in in, in New York as well, etc. It certainly seems that the uh, the markets are, are not uh, not phased at all, uh, even with regards to the ECB QE leak. Even that has failed to, uh, given the fact that obviously QE uh, creates inflation and obviously uh, uh, should generally help uh, the price of gold. Uh, gold is certainly not pricing in any QE at all with regards to the ECB. Also, the Euro USD still remains above 1.06, and that's not pricing any QE. So, certainly seems to be very, um, very strange price action at present. Also, with regards to copper, yes, we've had the the, the slight bump or the short squeeze higher, even with regards to oil. Uh, we had the slight bump and short squeeze post the uh, news with regards to. Uh, the Chinese metal story overnight, and that obviously hasn't really um, translated into any significant rally as such. Okay, so again, it's it's a mixed bag, mixed bag at present. Okay, so again, it's very hard to read at present. Also, with regards to the light volume type uh, Thanksgiving environment as well that we are currently in, the variables are certainly distorted to a large extent, especially when it comes to European indices, given the fact that obviously we've gapped down quite substantially this morning. So again, we shall see and keep observing as to which way this market will go. Gold certainly is making a, a pivot low at 1067 at the moment. Copper still remains weak at 207. Oil remains weak at $41. Uh, again, nothing as of, uh, of any significance. We've had weaker Chinese data overnight. We've had weaker UK consumer data overnight as well. Okay, we've had weaker French jobs data overnight uh, as well. We've had weaker uh, French data this morning, uh, if I can recollect correctly. If I just go back now and uh, just confirm, the uh, the actual French data this morning was definitely coming out on the well, it certainly came out on the weaker side. Uh, let's just confirm. French consumer spending is minus 0.7 percent expected was nine minus 0.1. So that exactly isn't uh, very bullish uh, from my perspective. So again, it's a um, a mixed bag uh, in terms of economic data. Now we have had the UK data released just now in terms of GDP. GDP confirmed that 0.5% drag on growth comes from trade, which contributed negative 1.5 percentage point heaviest drag on record. That's not exactly bullish. Uh, UK index server of the index of services at uh, 0.4%, certainly stronger. Uh, the total business investment stronger. Total business investment year uh, on a month on month or quarter on quarter basis stronger. Exports came in line, but the imports certainly increased. So again, that's going to be uh, an issue going forward uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, the uh, the actual balance of trade, okay. So UK gross fixed capital formation 1.3 percent certainly coming out stronger. Private consumption coming out spender. Government spending coming out stronger. So overall, it certainly is looking uh, relatively bullish. But in terms of the FTSE 100, but we have the uh, Shanghai down minus 5.5 percent overnight, of which we have to contend with. So again, it's going to be very tricky in terms of how the market responds. Given the fact that you have the, the Shanghai down minus 5.5% and you have the FTSE 100 rallying already, uh, it certainly seems that all good news is certainly baked into the cake to a large extent. Okay, Now let's have a look at the actual FTSE 100 now on a, on a uh, daily basis. Uh, the daily basis, the diagonal trend line which I stated yesterday and I explained in my analysis that the uh, level of 6400 will be absolutely crucial and that's exactly what occurred. 
we had a uh, quite a significant and substantial gap down uh, this morning with regards to Shanghai being down 5.5% and you can see that the market certainly are reversing at present. Now the 60 minute chart of the FTSE 100 is a bear flag, uh, you currently have a bear flag in play so you have bearish consolidation here uh, in terms of the FTSE itself and you are looking for potentially new lows at 6330. So again that's going to be interesting going forward as to which way this market will move. Will the stronger UK data that's come out this morning uh, force the shorts and uh, potentially make a new pivot high or will the concerns over the Shanghai and geopolitical fears cause the FTSE to move lower. So the, the the battle is on between the bulls and the bears and it's going to be very interesting to observe. Okay. Now in terms of the uh, the actual um, uh, European indices now, German DAX itself, if we go to the daily chart and you know the daily chart certainly has a uh, gap fill resistance at 10300 level that certainly was closed yesterday. Where in terms of the 60 minute chart you can see that the pivot high that we've nailed thus far is 10367 and that, that should remain in terms of holding resistance. The 10 minute chart on the German DAX again we're going into gap fill. As soon as that gap was filled we, we obviously have found weakness twice this uh, thus far. So whether or not this, uh, this market can sustain uh, a new move higher uh, again we need to observe and watch carefully okay for now. But for now, given the fact that we have the Shanghai down uh, quite significantly overnight, bear that in mind, uh, we do have this risk-off scenario uh, in terms of the uh, the actual market itself. It just depends whether or not the markets can shake off the uh, the actual Shanghai being down quite significantly overnight, and also getting in terms of the uh, the actual economic data that's going to come out thus far. French data certainly has been weak. Uh, German import prices certainly weaker than expected. So again. That's a, a cause for concern. We've got Eurozone, uh, GDP out and, and consumer confidence and economic sentiment, industrial confidence, business climate, and also we have German consumer confidence as well. So again, that will dictate in terms of the next move in the European markets too. Okay. Now we have uh, the Euro currently breaking below the 1.06, a so slightly bullish uh, bias on European equities given the fact that you have an inverse relationship there. Uh, and it should be interesting again. Uh, how the markets tackle the Shanghai being down quite significantly of 5.5% drop. Uh, will the gap fill on uh, the DAX hold or will we take out uh, the highs based on the euro dipping lower? Again, that's going to be interesting in terms of the QE trade. Okay, I think that's a market wrap, folks. Be sure to watch out for the uh, European data that's coming out shortly. Again, that will dictate the next move uh, in terms of the, uh, the actual market indices themselves. All eyes will be on the Shanghai. And US markets too. Now, just before I do uh, wrap up, I'll just give you an insight on US markets. The S&P 500 on the uh, the last day of uh, trading basically closed down week, broke out this symmetrical wedge, uh, broke down to 2088. We're currently at 2088 at present. So again, it certainly brings that into context. So bear that in mind. The 60-minute chart has been putting in lower highs and looking for a potential lower low. So 2077, 2072 will potentially be a low downside target on the uh, on the S&P 500. The daily chart of the S&P 500, we already know uh, in terms of uh, weakness itself, we are holding the FIB 75% at 2092. If we can take out 2092 and trade higher, then yes, the bulls are back in control and you are looking at 2116. The weekly chart on the S&P 500 is still a inside bar and therefore using that projection or using the weakness on there, you can project the weakness on the rest of the markets too. So again, interesting scenario in terms of US compared to the European indices. U European indices are distorted to a large extent due to QE. US markets are immune to that. So again, it will be interesting to get a clearer direction from US markets later today when they are open for half the day. Even though it is going to be light volume and uh, it does, there, there is a slight bias to the, the upside, you cannot ignore the Shanghai being down 5.5% overnight and also geopolitical concerns with regards to Russia and Turkey. And not to mention terrorism concerns going into the weekend. So therefore, add all those variables together, add in weak French data, uh, and uh, it certainly doesn't look good. Okay, uh, my uh, bias at present is definitely towards the, the downside, even though we have uh, this uh, stronger UK economic data. That's the only uh, short squeeze element I can see thus far, and uh, it will be interesting to see what how the rest of the day unfolds. Uh, happy trading, and be sure to visit cfds.com uh, for your trading needs. Goodbye now.